is the deepest yearning of the human soul. And when we are in that creative state of mind, I think I've got more spiritual in this time period, but we are actually connected to our higher self. The higher self is the universe, is the cosmos, is the world that we live in, the energy of creation. And sometimes when I walk in the garden to pick my materials or admire the treasures of nature, a thought comes to my mind and the beautiful words of that song always ring in. We are the world, we are the children, we are the ones who can create a better world for you and for me. On that note, Joe, Ikebana has given me that joy and that creative outlet. Ikebana began in Japan as an offering to the gods, very similar to what we have in India, where we take flowers to our temples. And uh, after which, because it had you arrange your green materials, there was an alcove created in the homes, which was called the tokonoma traditionally. Today, Ikebana has grown into everyone's homes, like drifting clouds, it's all over the place. One of the Sofu Teshigahara, who founded uh, the Sugetsu school of Ikebana, believed in Ikebana anywhere, anytime, by anyone. And he encouraged looking out for more creative spaces to arrange your ikebana. So for all Sugetsu learners, book five has a special section which talks about how we can complement our ikebana with a piece of art. A piece of art could be a photograph or it could be a sculpture, a painting, anything that the creator finds it to be want to create an ikebana with. Today, I'm going to complement the strokes of the brush with the strokes of nature through my ikebana. Thank you for joining in. Okay. We begin with the container, of course, and the choice of the container should complement the painting. And I don't know if you can see it clearly, I don't, Zoom has its uh, limitations, but if you zoom in, the color of the vase in itself is so beautiful that it literally, as if it was made for this painting. This painting is over 50 years old, but this is uh, very new, but beautifully picks up those colors. And now I would want to highlight the strong strokes of the brush over there. These really strong brush br running up there with this piece of wood, which is a piece of sculpture or a piece of art, the treasures that I was talking about. It's so beautiful. The, it's the, as if brush strokes have gone through it. And now in order to highlight the, this beautiful, this it's very strong line. I've chosen these gemia palms. These are fresh lines of the gemia palm, which have just come out, which have just actually just budded out. Otherwise, it is a very strong material. I'm going to cut under water. I don't know if you can see it. It's as if it's stroking this piece of wood. They say one should enjoy working with your materials. I just love the way there are certain um, direction the palms take. Now look at this one for instance, it's just growing so beautifully and in my mind it picks up this lovely line over here. I'm going to just remove a few of the leaves so that it looks tidy. The 
this is dried hydrangea and uh, it has dried again so beautifully it has retained its full form and it picks up the color so beautifully of the base color in the painting so I'm going to use this recently this is an older hydrangea which I dried actually but this one you can even see the buds on it we were in the hills recently and an aunt of mine has a whole garden full of hydrangeas and they have dried again so lovely and, and they have actually picked up the color of the painting you know so in ikebana we always start with some design that you may have in mind for me i was wanting to envelop because it is such a strong line I want to make it such that there is a strong base it's enveloped in a very strong way because there is it these are dried I'm not cutting them Now, you know, I could have actually, there was this lovely uh, blue hydrangea that I had. In fact, I wanted to add a dash of this at the back. Just a glimpse, nothing in the face. But it is so beautiful that it will take away from the visual balance that I want to create with this arrangement and the painting together. So, it will attract more attention. So, I'm going to leave this for now and use it elsewhere. And now to finish it off, I'm going to use these lovely tips of these, um, it's a hybrid bottle brush. It's budding away right now and it has such a lovely color in the tip. I think my base is a little um, just a glimpse showing at the back. The back of a Nikabana arrangement is as important as a front. So rather than working from behind because of the painting, I am coming forward or sideways I would say. I don't want to block the view too much. A dash of the yellow maybe again, a bit at the back. This I picked up in the morning. And um, I think that is my first arrangement. I hope you have all enjoyed it. Okay. It's okay.
So this is my second painting and um, I love the colors, I love the, the, the lines in it and they say that what you are inspired bid, with from a painting and what you create through your Ikebana are the magical strokes for you. I begin with this beautiful piece of, um, it's a phoenix, it's actually the foxtail palm, the inflorescence of it, the foxtail palm inflorescence and it, and I'm going to place it this way, it will give support to my material and it has such a beautiful line and I think it does pick up the general feeling from this. We have this material here, it is, I don't know if anyone can guess, but I, I know the chats have been disabled because, so, um, so the, this is uh, the white bird of paradise. It's a white bird of paradise and I just love this magical stroke. And uh, before we, I, um, I want to show, this one hasn't opened actually, this bird of paradise, but this one, you can see the white and you can see the little purple here and it so beautifully picks up from this painting. I'm going to add it here. This particular material stays very well without water, but I do have water inside it. This is a water plant and um, it adds so much to this arrangement. There is a lovely dried one actually, first I thought I'll use this one. Do you see how it's dried, the lines and how it's, if you can zoom into this, I don't know. But the way it has formed, inside is a lovely purple, outside is a pur light purple, and it's a water plant. I'm going to use a combination of a fresh one with its little... In nature, I feel everything is perfect. It is the way it was meant to be made, the way it was meant to be created. We should accept what... So... Yes. This beautiful line, it's kind of dried, but... And um, now for, I may want to use a third, I don't know, but for me always it's been less is more. So I know it's a demonstration, but it's a different kind of a demonstration whereby you are at home and uh, you feel you are, you know, you're giving a demonstration, but the interaction with the audience is not there. So I'm going to go with the flow of what I would normally do at home. So I'm not going to add this third one. And just to bring out the color in this, I'm going to add this over here, a dash more. Cutting under water is very important to preserve the, the longevity of your material and that friends is my second arrangement.
So friends, um, I was, uh, I had planned actually five arrangements, but I got a little carried away. So this is my sixth one. So in between setting up the other room, because I'm moving from room to room. And um, so um, I thought I'll talk about this arrangement, which I have made already. And another aspect in book five, so get to book five, is the concept of showing motion or movement in your arrangement. For me, this painting in itself, if somebody could zoom into it, shows movement. It's like a whirlwind or a tornado. So in order to pick that thought into my Ikebana, I first chose this beautiful round container, which has this lovely yellow kind of golden, it's a, actually it's, a, it's made out of glass and it's round. So it just blends in so beautifully with this painting. It has these lovely yellow patterns on it. And um, so this was the choice I had. And the green material, I thought I would be using this Juniperus prostrata. The juniper has a mind of its own. In fact, when you cut your juniper, it, if, if you need to place it in a direction such as that, it's fine. But if you need to place it in any other direction, you will, it will just not move. But yes, you can give it a shape. You can give it, this is exactly what I have done. I have wired it, there's wire on it, to kind of give it the flow, the motion from my painting comes downwards here. And um, so Juniperus prostrata, I have wired and I could show wiring, but I don't know, it's somehow bordering on from a demonstration to, so whatever, so I don't know. So this is how you, maybe I'll just show it actually. You go between the area which you want to do, give a line to, go in between the various nodes along. In Ikebana, we normally try and use material, the wire, which is the color of your stem, so that it does not, in between show, do not, you have to be on the trunk line in itself. So my bonsai friends will see my wiring ability over here also, by the way, if they're watching. So once you wired it, you can then give it a shape. Gently, very gently, the way you want it. These are amazing arum lilies. I had to stand up over here. That's why I avoided doing this one. These are, the mouth is right here. So I had to place my, I mean, the angle in which I would have come. So purple and yellow arum lilies to pick this up. And this beautiful dried line again to add motion. That's my third design. एक एक करके देगी ना वो सो फ्रेंड्स
So this is my fourth painting and I had to shift all my paintings around at home to get the right angle and put the right cabinet in front. So do excuse the, the gap between the demonstration. And uh, here it was the other way around. The artist was inspired by my Ikebana. A very um, friend, I mean, it was very sweet of the artist. I hope George, you're watching. Uh, he came over for a charity event and we requested him to make a piece of art for us. And there was this lovely, I mean, I don't want to call my own Ikebana lovely, but anyway, there was this Ikebana on the dining table which had tulips and um, there was a little design to it and uh, without even my knowing he went clicking around some pictures and when the end result came I realized that he was inspired by my cabana and here is the painting. So now I'm going to go backwards and make the arrangement to complement this which is a very difficult one to do. So again, I'm going to pick up a topic from book five where I'm going to use unconventional material to highlight this beautiful painting. I have used these two containers. I don't know uh, because this painting is so colorful. I don't know what visual um, visually you all can see really, but I will post pictures later on. So I have this um, lovely, um, I mean, I just, I was just strolling around and thinking, what should I do actually? And I thought uh, of why not this, it just, just happened to just uh, go with the painting so beautifully. Purple picks it up and this picks it up. And then my decision, unconventional materials where I don't need to use any flowers. I've used two containers just to give a little height and for the ease of me to create the structure that I wish to on top and um, it's always interesting to use two containers. So um, I've also got further to add to it, I have this lovely material, it's actually a pin holder and I'm sure all, all my Sugetsu friends and Ikebana friends will recognize this. It just, uh, I mean, there were different colors available when I picked it up, but I picked up orange. And um, this picks, adds so much to, and it'll make my base also steady. It takes all sorts of, it can take any shape I may wish it to take. So there is that flow and now um, I would like to add um, either this, let's see, I thought let me be a little adventurous today in order to, I guess you all can see that I am picking up a few lines from the painting. There is no pin holder here, by the way. So, and um, I'm going to create a zigzag pattern. One could go this way. lower okay. anchor it in the base here And um, now I'm going to add, um, I hope it looks okay. <laughs> uh, 
and uh, but that's a, that's a difference between the interaction with the audience. If there was an audience here, they would give some interaction and here there is, I don't know what's going on, but anyway. So I'm going to use these lovely philodendron leaves and um, this actually. They are, just the shapes of them is so beautiful. Like I said, I love, the, look at the beautiful shape that this has. So this picks up the green over there. I'm trying to highlight the surface of the green material. I may, or there was this lovely line I had over here which I could use. There was another one. It is going in through the uh, through the wire. Maybe one more. Maybe one more because it's a demonstration. Otherwise, I'd stop at three. This, if you all, this is, I was, you know, I was trying to look around for the right size of the mon Monstera. These are Philodendron and this was Monstera and I tried one, I tried the other one. It was just not looking right. And I did want to give it a flow from the Monstera leaves that George has depicted over there coming down. And uh, that, friends, is my fourth Fifth, oh my God, this is such a tough one. Whew. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Okay. I can I keep this here or here? Actually I'll keep it here. This is because there's a lot of cutting. Hanji, I'll move it away later. Okay? I have to bend, you know. I have to cut here. It's okay. This is how we do it, yeah. It's important to have it here. Okay. Okay. Ready? Fine. This is my fifth painting and um, again muted colors so you know my choice of colors actually um, but actually uh, over a period of time the, the canvas the colors do kind of become a little muted. This is again on a board and um, in my mind when I look at it it looks like a reflection in a you know in a waterside area. So I'm going to, in order to do that, in order to pick up and complement this painting, I'm only using water plants. Only water plants and only a very few of them. So there is going to be nothing colorful here, um, just so that this painting, anything colorful I may add will just take away from it. 
So, I begin with this um, lovely piece of wood, which many of my friends, I picked it up in, it, this is here, and my friend uh, Yasuko said, you have to show it, pick it up, arrange with it, and therefore I am not keeping it standing here. So, I'm going to now set it up. If you look at the way it is made, the beautiful lines on it, they give you somehow, they make you feel there's a ripple of water going through this entire design. Now the anchoring part comes. She didn't want me to have, the, have it the easy way. She said, no, you must do it there and then. So this is what you're going to hear, a bit of the balancing act, I would say. And uh, so a bit, so my container, you will just see a dash of it. Is it standing fine? So you're going to just see a very small visual blue over here. My main focus is this piece over here, which picks up the lines from this painting. I begin with, uh, this is a lovely papyrus, it's dried and it's just so amazing again, I mean, I'm going to use my other cutter. still high. Sorry. So only papyrus. I should have had actually cut a bit of it. In the morning I sent, we had these picked up actually. There's this lovely, um, again a water plant, but it, the way it picks up this brush stroke here was when I found this, I said, that's it, my arrangement is done. And I love the way this little line is also coming down. It's so beautiful. Sorry. This is, it's a very simple arrangement, but it, I'm using, oh, because I'm only using papyrus and this brown material, it's going to take a little while to Stalks are already full. The other one, the smaller one. Okay, okay, fine, this is fine. Nandina again is a beautiful material, and at this time in the winter months. The tips become a lovely maroony red. And um, 
This one has more of the maroon in it and a bit of the dried portion. So I'm going to use this just to give a little base, a little energy at the mouth of the container. So uh, before I move, um, before I go to the other side, I just want to finish off this by adding a whole lot of these berries on the mouth. These are um, the inflorescence of the phoenix palm. And just see this also, I cut this morning, but they last in water. And how amazing are the, and the color of it is so just absolutely So I'm going to add one more of this brown line to the height, for a little height. No, uh, this one. Thank you. Thanks. Here. Oops, sorry. I don't know if you can visually feel that you're on a lakeside with dried material around because it's winter time in India anyway. So it is pretty. Coming to this side, oh, I have uh, just, as I said, it was reflection. So I wanted to highlight a bit of orange. Like I said, I'm not using any bright flowers. This lovely piece of rock. And um, I'm going to place it here. This is just a hint or a, just a reflection. Thank you so much. Can I have a thinner papyrus? Yeah. I'm going to let these be because it adds interest. It adds mass in a way. This is the flower of another inflorescence uh, of uh, some grass family, I'm sure. It was um, growing in the water. Like I said, it's really simple, but the, you need a lot of time, patience, I'm enjoying it. I hope you all are. It's a little thick. And now, just one more. Can I, have a, can I have some more of those papyrus, please? Thank you. And 
this papyrus is standing alone, so just give him company. Now, being, I just was thinking what, you, what to use as a flower to add something to it, but these lovely, I know they don't add color, but they add so much beauty. I don't know if you can, this, I just thought I'm gonna add these. Right at the mouth. We are lucky that we found this because there's a problem of um, flowers coming in because of the situation we are all in today. There was a wedding season, I mean the wedding season was round the corner right now. So I think there was some flowers imported at that time. The idea was there was, for this demonstration, I wanted this arrangement, something to talk to you all. So this is the Aram lilies are doing the job. Can I have a few of the, no that one. Yeah. Please come forward and see if I need to add something. I could add a branch of maybe something. So this is. When you complement your design at home, you have to keep in mind that, that it is, oopsie, just as he's calling here maybe. Thank you so much.
And this is uh, my uh, Fidale arrangement. I've chosen this painting over here, um, basically trying to symbolize or symbolically representing our entry into the new year 2021. I hope and pray that we all walk hand in hand into the new year with great tidings and blessings for the entire planet Earth. On that note, um, so in order to highlight again, in order to highlight uh, and not take away from the painting, I, I had this um, piece of wood and I had these Buddha belly bamboo lines. So if I had used them in their brown or in their natural color, it would have definitely conflicted with the painting. So just that the structure is there but yet it doesn't take away too much from the painting I gave it to the best of my ability um, these strokes of on the canvas on these pieces of wood so if you zoom into the piece of wood it actually does really does look like these brush strokes on it but um, so now we begin with um, yes so now this is some really nice uh, material my friends are always wanting some of it and uh, I is right now the whole tree is full of it so it's uh, again in fluorescence of the it's another palm which I think it's called uh, let me just the name comes to me I will talk about it This was free, it is freestanding, it is not wired at all till right now when we took it all off and my friend Yasuko came to help me and she says, you know, we should wire it. I said, okay, let's wire it a bit. So we have wired it a bit here. And um, this one, I'm going to try and create a design with it. It's like a balancing act, really. Yes, it go if I could. Yeah. One second, one second. One second, one second, sorry. Got it? Oh. <laughs> there. I found this little nook and corner between the, between this. I wanted it to stay like this. So, sorry. Perfect. Yes. I wanted this line to remain. I could push it out a bit more. For, yeah, perfect. Yes. I wanted to highlight the movement over here. So, and place this. Apologies for me coming in front, but this is a large arrangement. So, That goes at the back 
and when somebody would walk through my home they would see that the back also has this lovely line at the back which I'm not going to cut this actually this is what it has with the berries and all of them have fallen off and this has the berries in them so it's a treasure I would say yes and um, we have this oopsie I have this um, pittosporum green and take one at a time This is variegated pittosporum. Ikebana, while I'm making it and as there's no audience, they say Ikebana is the art of the moment and it gives life to the moment. This is in the book Kadenshu by Sofu Teshigahara. A mixture of the variegated and the green. Oops. what is acting with the kibana it the material sometimes doesn't want to stay the way you want it to stay but when I cut it in the morning I said wow this has a lovely line it's coming forward it'll stay yes the birds of paradise represent in my mind all of us praying for an amazing new year and I want to fill up as much as I can, wherever I can, with Bird of Paradise. I'll start with the back. These flowers have already been cut under water.
So in this design, I, sorry. I hope we haven't crossed the time limit. Where are we in terms of time? I hope I'm not blocking the camera either. The bird of paradise, the flowers, they pick up, pick up the color of these lines so love beautifully. I think I needed a, probably that's what happened in my other arrangement. I needed a stool to kind of get into it, but. Sorry. I guess they have a mind of their own. Just has to go one sec. Sorry. I don't want to cover as much as possible over here. And just want to highlight the line there. But being a new year arrangement. Is it over? Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is the final bird of paradise. Da -da 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 -da. I guess here. And um, so, I, I have the hand here. I was wanting to pick up. I've been, I, you know, I bought these beautiful hydrangeas. They've gone all over the house. I still haven't used them. And uh, I'm going to ask you if you can. Can I cross by? Can I cross by? Um, if you say so, I'll use it over here. Does it pick up the color? I guess there's no interaction. <laughs> Let me see. Okay. Okay, there is some interaction then. Because it's New Year's, by the way, I'm using it. Otherwise, uh, Ordinarily, I would not. I'm going to take it. <laughs> Can I have one more hydrangea? There's one more lying there. While we add another hydrangea there. So, the hydrangea I wanted to be there, but yet not be visible really. So, uh, And just to finish it off, I thought I'll add a bit of these around, but it's not necessary. But in India, in Delhi at least, we always fantasize. Uh, we always fantasize um, a white New Year or a white Christmas. It means so much to all of us because we've never had snow in, in Delhi. So just to add that touch for the New Year. And... Um, May add this later, just one second, sorry. These are dried ferns. Uh, 
I love these ferns, they, they complement the bird of paradise because they have the same flow, the same structure. They're not taking away from the design. So, and being bleached, they're not taking away from my painting either. Thank you. I hope the green is. And I think I'll stop here with just a little dash here because I'll add a bit more. I'm sure you. I'll just clear up this. Oh, yes, the last. Just the last. Sorry. Just here. Can I just pass by? No, I want to add this. One, one more, one minute. I haven't added it. Like I said, the back of the arrangement is very important. So you do not see my second hydrangea from the front, but it's visible at the back. And uh, thank you so much, everyone, for. Oh yes, and. Um, this is my sixth arrangement. Symbolically, symbolically, um, I wanted to open this door and walk into the new year, 2021, all of us holding hands together. Beautiful. And um, on that, I'd like to thank before I step out symbolically again through the doors of my into my backyard so you all can just again symbolically I'd like to thank uh, two of my dear friends from the Sugetsu Association who have helped me Neera Makija and Yasuko Malhotra and uh, thank you so much for helping out okay <laughs> Yasuko come Oh, my mask is not on. Thank you. <laughs> and now I will walk out just to symbolize the new year. Come friends, let's walk hand in hand into the new year. Let's open this door. And that's my phoenix palm, the foxtail palm over there. You can smile. <laughs> I hope you've all enjoyed the, my demonstration. Um, I've tried to, um, uh, I mean, in, in the circumstances, switching from wall to wall has been quite a challenge. But uh, thank you once again and a very, very happy new year, everyone. Over to you, Mrs. Das. Namaste. Yeah.
How is this? How is this looking? I didn't see. Huh? Bana diya? Oh. Huh? 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 Kon kon? Oh, nee, abhi baat kar rahi hai, madam. Nee, wo na. Thank you. Ha, ban kar de. How long was it? One forty 